create a return to form. Now, taking the warm-up for Motherwell yesterday was Yugoslav coach Miodrag Krivokopic, who only managed to get back to Scotland on Wednesday after being stranded in Belgrade for the last four weeks due to the NATO airstrikes. Krivokopic told me later that he'd finally managed to make a six-hour bus journey into Bulgaria, where he caught a plane out of Sofia. Sadly, though, he's had to leave his family behind in Belgrade. To the football then, match commentator Peter Martin. Mother will make one change from the side which lost 1-0 to Celtic last week in Glasgow. Tony Thomas comes in at the expense of Lee McCulloch. But the man grabbing all the headlines for his heroics in goal last Saturday, goalkeeper Andy Gorham. And despite some world-class saves, the goalie failed to earn the side at least a point. But he has earned himself a new two-year deal to stay with Motherwell, which is great news for the Fir Park faithful. Well, Hearts in recent weeks have strengthened their side with the acquisition of Kevin James and Darren Jackson. But as yet, this side can only boast one win in the last 17 competitive games. Just not good enough, according to manager Jim Jeffries. Well, one man who is hoping to earn their second victory is former Celtic player Darren Jackson. Last season, he was chasing a Premier League medal and facing Andy Gorham of Rangers. Today, it's all about keeping Hearts in the Premier League. Referee today is Alan Freeland. Well, I have mentioned the plight of Hearts and the desperation to avoid relegation, but Motherwell's plights, everybody's serious because they are by no manner of means out of the relegation dogfight, but Hearts on the attack, first of all, Stefan Adam won't get there, and Andy Gorham gets his first touch and receives the applause of the Fir Park fans. Stefan Adam has taken a bad fall there. Adam lies motionless. Sean Teal just getting that towards the touchline. Adam climbing all over him. Very similar, in fact, to Vida Reset. And his challenge from Darren Jackson a couple of weeks ago. But thankfully, Adam is OK. McMillan looking inside. The mother will slowly build from the back. Jed Brannan, well, he's been an inspiration in the middle of the park, setting up things. And here's Don Goodman covered by Stephen Presley. Fair challenge for Presley. Tries to play the ball out on the deck. Poor ball by Colin Cameron. Here's Brannon playing it in first time. Spencer gets ahead. A great save by Gilles Risset. Confidence booster for the Hearts goalkeeper. It was a lovely cross. Just guiding it towards the goal, John Spencer, but not too far away from Gilles Risset. Stefan Adam returns to the fray, and thankfully no serious damage after falling. Seven again challenging, McGowan winning out for Motherwell. Spencer holding the ball up beautifully. But it breaks down once again, it's not pretty football to watch, but then again at this stage of the season, you wouldn't expect anything else. Well, he's lost that ball, here's Jackson with a chance! Oh! Inches past! Oh, that's the second time in as many weeks that Darren Jackson really could have given Hearts a vital lead in this game. There was a mix-up from the Motherwell defence, and there's the shot. Gorham furious with his defence. First real chance, there's the slip-up. Jackson, first touch, and just inches past Gorham's post. Yet to score for Hearts. Jed Brannan, the culprit. More often than not, Jim Jeffries is only too well aware that you have to take your chances, especially in desperate times. And the instruction's quite clear for the remainder of this half. A nice play by Rob McKinnon, actually did Joe Jose a service there. And again, the value of Cameron there for all to see. Plays it in, McSwiggin, first time drive again. Adam Mayle, he may get a second chance at it. Looking across, breaks to Jackson once again. This time it's in the net! That is a wonderful goal by Darren Jackson. And if you ever want to endear yourself to the Hearts fans, that's the perfect way to do it. 21 minutes of this match gone. Mullow nil, Hearts won. Well, you didn't have to ask Darren Jackson twice. 
The damn shot was blocked and eventually breaks out. Jackson just steadies himself, the balance is right and the drive is well past Andy Gorham. There's nothing he can do, you can tell by the smile on Jackson's face. That could be the goal that sends Hearts well on their way to safety. And if there's a message for Craig Brown and strikers, Jackson has just delivered it. Well, Jim Jeffries will be delighted with the way Jackson took that goal there. It will be a boost to the players' confidence and no doubt to the managers. Steady the nerves. Hearts midfield working tirelessly, breaking up the move. Lock. And the referee brings the first half to a close. And it's a first half, really, where the visitors will be by far the happiest. They've had chances in this game. And Darren Jackson is the man who's capitalised. He had a chance early on in the first half through a mistake by Jed Brannan. He didn't take that opportunity. But in the 21st minute of the match, Jackson steadied himself and his volley into the roof of the net has given Hearts a valuable one goal advantage at half time. Whatever Motherwell manager Billy Davis said to his players at half time, he'll be looking for an immediate response in the second half of this match because the first 45 minutes delivered very little in the way of attacking play. Only John Spencer's header troubles Gilles Rousset, and I use the word trouble rather favourably. Hearts, in contrast, well, they played their tactics exactly hitting well on the counter-attack and reaping the rewards with Darren Jackson's goal. And the Motherwell boss will look at a team which really hasn't had any fluency in the passing and they haven't really created much. And Darren Jackson will be making that man very happy because he'll be hoping the results elsewhere go his way. Hearts once again coming away and the referee plays on, Stefan Adam with the chance, this is 2-0! Oh, that is a tragic mistake from Motherwell and they're looking towards the assistant referee but Adam doesn't care, he played to the whistle and it's the perfect start to the second half for Hearts which almost kills off Motherwell's involvement but Swiggin wasn't involved in it which left Adam onside and the chance to place that ball into the back of the net and Hearts have a 2-0 advantage before Motherwell can even contemplate Spencer, oh, just over the top. He's angry with himself. That was an opportunity to hit back immediately. Just a long ball, Hearts not concentrating after getting that second goal and Spencer unable to direct it under the bar. Tony Thomas under pressure with Gary McSwiggan. Thomas, McSwiggan wins out, comes away. Stefan Adam is in there. He's going to get the header, oh, it's off the top of the bar! Second attempt over. Well, Adam was the only Hearts player in the box. Gary McSwiggan swiveled away from two Motherwell defenders. He just looked up, measured the cross, and Adam directing it away from Gorham. Great chance for Hearts. They certainly have started the more positive of the two sides in the second half. And there. There's evidence of how much Stefan Adam has battled for the cause, and so has Gary McSwigan, who gets away once again. Darren Jackson almost, and here's Rob McKinnon, this will be a drive if he can set himself up, he goes for the cross, and down 3 nothing. Oh, that was a wonderful goal by Hearts! Well, Rob McKinnon looked as if he was setting himself up. But he opts for a beautiful cross to Stefan Adam. It's Mother with nil, Hearts 3. Lovely floated cross, Adam had all the time in the world to pick his spot. And that really is the killer blow for Motherwell. Here's Colin Cameron, Motherwell standing off and it's with McSwiggan, he plays a quick one too. This will be a lovely goal if he can finish it. Cameron just tips it, great save by Andy Gorham. Wonderful save by the Motherwell keeper. And he's angry with the way his side stood off the two Motherwell players. It was a quick one too, a quick break. And Cameron maybe was looking to hit that first time on that occasion, but he tried the left foot. And a wonderful save by Andy Gorham. Nice play by Vincent Garan, just loses Stephen McMillan with a dummy. 
lovely skill and McMillan is in trouble in his back. Stephen McMillan just looked as if he was stretching there. Garan coming away, yes, the left leg and the damage to the base of the spine. Stephen McMillan back in the action. And I think Stephen McMillan thought twice about putting that ball so soon after the treatment on his left leg. And he's played a poor ball, which Colin Cameron will drive towards. Goal! What a goal! What a way to finish the match! A perfect finish from Colin Cameron. Well, he's come back into the hard side over the last couple of weeks when many people had written him off. McMillan had just been treated for an injury. It was a poor pass, and Cameron, with confidence in mind, drove the ball past Andy Gorham. And that's a wonderful goal by Colin Cameron. It's his second goal in the league campaign, and Gorham really had no chance. to a close, a convincing win for Hearts. It all started with a wonderful volley by Darren Jackson in the first half. Hearts came out in the second, continued where they'd left off. Stefan Adam took advantage of an offside trap which beat Motherwell. He played to the whistle, dispatched the ball into the back of the net, and it was Adam who added his second with a lovely flighted ball from Rob McKinnon, laid right onto the Frenchman's head to make it 3-0 to Hearts. And right at the death, a fantastic strike by Colin Cameron. Left Andy Gorham well beaten and gives all three points to the visiting sides. The score here from Fir Park. Motherwell nil, Hearts four. Just one of these days, I think, just one of these games that the players did not perform. There was, you know, throughout the side, there was, there was no performances. Uh, we didn't look sharp, we didn't look hungry. And we let the fans down and everybody at the club. Yeah, we've not had a lot to beat, but uh, certainly the best performance. And uh, you know, it's maybe been late in coming, but it's coming at the right time. We've got ourselves in trouble, and if we keep playing like that, we'll, we'll get out of it. But uh, you know, we're not getting carried away. It was a great performance today, but we still work to do. Just before you scored, you had a wee bit of a miss, so it was only more important you were going to score with that one. That wasn't a bad miss. I had one, a worse one last week. So, um, but yeah, I'm happy. Uh, but as I say, I'm delighted to get the three points. It, it, it gives us a wee chance now. We've got them firm in next week. They've got a point today, 2-0 down. They've showed great spirit to come back, so that'll be a good game next week. And the support will be fantastic. We've got right behind us. And as I say, if we can finish the season on a high, I think we'll have a lot to look forward to for them next year. Yeah, and that result's done Hearts a lot of good. They now have a four-point cushion over Dunfermline going into next Monday afternoon's match between those two. And as we can see at the top, Rangers now have a seven-point advantage over Celtic. Graham Spears looking at that there on, on the highlights. Hearts, very impressive. Yeah, they are. I mean, it's been a most peculiar season for Hearts. Um, I am Jim Jeffrey's number one fan. I think his managerial career has had a great pedigree. But I must admit, I think Jim Jeffries has made errors of judgment in the, in the season just finishing. And I think he must take some of the responsibility, um, despite all the success he's had in the past. He, he would have to own up to that. But now Jackson has been an inspired signing. Mm -hmm. And Jim would quite rightly say how different it would have been had he had Colin Cameron for the whole of the season. These two guys have made a difference. Yeah, Jackson, an inspired signing, uh, Stuart. And Colin Cameron, he was out for a long time, but it's interesting that over the last four or five games, as he's come back, as Jackson's come in, hearts have improved. They certainly have, and uh, it was going to be a good shot to beat Andy Gorham because he's in some some splendid form at the moment, and that was an excellent uh, strike from Darren Jackson. He certainly enjoyed it as well. Look at he him. really did enjoy that one. And uh, this one here, it's uh, uh, Colin Cameron. Full of running, that's what Hearts have been missing, I think. It is a uh, flair and imagination. Great run forward. And uh, a great, well, this is actually the one that Andy Gorham saved, an excellent save there. But he has, he's been really, I mean, the flair, the pace, just his willingness to get in the box, I think Hearts have been missing this season. And I think this is the goal he scores, Graham. Yes, um, Cameron coming through just on this, yeah, fantastic goal. I mean, he, he was such a factor in Hearts' campaign last season. 
with these driving runs from midfield. He's got a phenomenal engine in him, Colin Cameron. Mm. He can really, one of these midfielders that can cover a lot of ground and also come up with a good goal scoring tally for a midfielder. So there's no doubt they've missed him. How do you see that one going next Monday, Hearts and Dunfermline? It's, got, it's going to be a tricky game. Well, it certainly is. Everything to play for. Dunfermline have to win it to give themselves a chance. If Hearts win it, then I think that's maybe curtains for Dunfermline. And Graham, uh, just looking ahead to Wednesday, this Wednesday, the uh, Scotland match in Germany, we hear tonight that uh, Craig Burley is out of the Scotland squad. No real surprise there. Neil McCann's gone to hospital. We heard from Dick Advocat earlier, so it looks as though he's out. Matt Elliott has pulled out tonight, and I, I suspect Jackie McNamara will pull out tomorrow as well. Mm. Well, I mean, Craig Brown listed a cast of thousands for this game. I think a squad of 24 players. Mm. So he was, he was taking into account the usual five or six call-offs. I really don't think Craig will be losing much sleep over this game. He, he doesn't really give a monkeys about friendlies, to be honest. He uses it for, for, for experimental purposes. I guarantee it, um, he, he won't lose any sleep over this. It's, it's what comes after that in this crucial Euro 2000 campaign that counts. But there's not going to be any great surprises in this game. I think he'll just be using it as a, as a, as a limbering up exercise. OK, 